So how did the idea for St. Ames begin and why did you decide to create a cafe specifically? So we started off with chocolates and um, so initially we just kind of wanted to work for ourselves. We wanted to create something. We knew we had to create something. Mm -hmm. And then we just figured that food is a good place to start because the raw ingredients are cheap. Yeah. And you can then add your creativity. And so then we thought chocolate and it kind of took off from there. So our whole philosophy was that by the time you leave your house to go for coffee, it already needs to be better than your house. So yep. we need to have something that is special for people. Because um, I think most coffee shops don't really appreciate that. They kind of see coffee as, they don't really see it as a luxury. You know, it's a grab luxury. and go type of thing. Yeah, exactly. It's not something you have to do. I, um, think that I know these are old fashioned words, but they still stand true. Integrity and honor. Yeah. Like, there is no shame in working. I was, I, I was a dishwasher. I was the best dishwasher. There's no shame in working for low money at a job, but just make sure that you know that you're proud of that. You wouldn't be embarrassed if someone got that dirty, that clean dish. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, and usually, you know, the I, I'm definitely a believer in the law of vibration. You're putting out that bright vibration that you're proud of what you do at yeah. whatever level. Better things will be given to you um, and people will see it. You and your sister's cafe, St. Ames, is absolutely beautiful. Taking Thank it all you. the way back, how did you and your sister grow up? And were you always entrepreneurial and business savvy from your childhood? Uh, we grew up in um, Hackney. Um, and our mom, our, my mum's a teacher, my dad's in IT, but they're both really quite focused on education. Yeah. Typically, as it tends to be with Caribbean parents. Um, and um, would, we, would I say entrepreneurial growing up? I think, yeah, we, we always wanted to work um, with each other I think or we liked to be together so and I think we're quite headstrong so I think entrepreneurial pursuits was kind of going to be ultimately what we ended up in but I don't know if we knew that when we were younger I thought that I'd be a lawyer um Michaela wanted to be a few different things but as we kind of went into the world of work it kind of didn't really gel with us well mm -hmm. um so I think that we just you know we just kind of came out of that and decided to work together and we really enjoyed the fact that um what is that dog's owner? Okay, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> we um we really realized that it was um, a good fit for us, kind of being able to call our own shots and stuff. Yeah, wicked. So, how did the idea for Saint Ames begin, and why did you decide to create a cafe specifically? So we started off with chocolates, and um, so initially we just kind of wanted to work for ourselves. We wanted to create something. We knew we had to create something, mm -hmm. and then we just figured that food is a good place to start because the raw ingredients are cheap yeah and you can then add your creativity and so then we thought chocolate and it kind of took off from there and we were selling in wholesalers which is great but then wholesalers um it, we just realized that there was a missing step to kind of get directly actually to the customer would be better so we thought if mm -hmm. we sold directly to the customer with our own shop it would be good and so we did that uh, we wanted to do that and then we basically came up with the concept of making the shop actually more like a coffee shop and then we thought like what would make people want to come to a coffee shop and mm -hmm. you know trying to understand the sort of minds that people are in when they go for coffee so our whole philosophy was that by the time you leave your house to go for coffee it already needs to be better than your house so yep. we need to have something that is special for people um because I think most coffee shops don't really appreciate that they kind of see coffee as they don't really see it as a luxury, you know, it's a, a grab luxury. and go type of thing. Yeah, exactly. It's not something you have to do. I think that, you know, now in their sort of, we also wanted to be very much recession proof. We were very much cautious of this um, when we first started, which is weird because it wasn't a recession. Mm. But it's just as well because I think that, again, when people don't have much money, yeah. they try to spend their money on experiences or on things that are worthwhile more than mm -hmm. just a necessity. So you might not go to Starbucks every morning for coffee now, but you will choose to kind of like save up your money and go for an afternoon tea when things open back up. You know, you yeah. can always find a way to replace a necessity in your life, like with an yeah. espresso machine or whatever. But when it comes to an experience, you can't really replace that. And I think ultimately we are physical beings. People like to go on about digital and, you know, all this other stuff, but physically like we're physical beings. And so things that you can experience, 
it resonates with people really highly. So we kind of understood that I wanted to create a space where people can understand the ethos of St. Ames, which is just a life more beautiful. Wow, I love that. That is so powerful. And online, I was reading that there were a lot of trial and errors before this idea took off for you guys. What kind of ups and downs were there? And what do you credit to you both not giving up? Um, we did a lot of things. Like we did um, hair at one point. We did marshmallows before the chocolates. Um, and I'd say the reason we didn't give up is because we couldn't afford to. We just knew that we'd have to like work, find something that works. Yeah. And um, we just wanted, we just had the vision of the sort of life that we wanted to have. And I think that really, and we knew we couldn't, we didn't want to work for other people. So something had to work and yeah. everything worked. Everything works a little bit. I think that that's probably even people who give up on their businesses. It probably did work a little bit, but it's just kind of like sticking past that little bit to the next stage. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, 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 the chocolates themselves it took off quicker than most the other things we tried um mm -hmm. so it's just about finding the right sticking spot but i think me and michaela are quite good concepts i think we, we, we kind of create concepts so we created a concept to sell chocolate we had marshmallows that had its own concept the hair had its own concept mm -hmm. so i think that you know you just have to find the right um match between what you're bringing unique to the market but then also the size of the market and it's the right time for that right now so i think we came out in chocolate where luxury chocolate was kind of coming up to booming a little bit more um and the same thing with the the cafe we kind of came into a point where people were beginning to and i think from what we've done as well are starting to really understand the need for experience yeah that's some really powerful advice for everyone listening. It's true not to give up and to stick at your ideas, even if it's building slowly, as long as it's building and you can see some progress, but there definitely mm. might be something there. So that's amazing. And for people interested in opening their own cafe or restaurant, regarding funding, is that something that you guys completely covered yourselves or are there any resources you'd advise new business owners to go to to raise some capital? Yeah, we got, um, we got business loans. Mm -hmm. So our loans are done by Virgin Startup. Wow, and they're a company that ooh, pulls, uh, allows you to draw down the sorry, I'm just gonna start moving stuff into the car. Allows you to draw down the government's uh, funding. So it's a government backed loan mm -hmm. at six percent interest. Okay. Um, oh the guy's not here. Oh, sorry. This is the life of an entrepreneur. <laughs> There's never a moment where something's not happening. No, um, so it's a real in the in the day of the life. Exactly. Um, yeah, so it's government-backed funding, and so all of this, the funding we put behind the business was like through loans and things like that. My mm -hmm. partner, oh, he um, he also helped us, but he's also a co-director. Ah. Um, but mostly through loans. So I would recommend that people look out for Virgin Startup, Virgin Startup, um, huh? and the startup loan company, because that's um, that's that's how we got our funding. So it wasn't like we had savings or anything like that. Yeah, I came from kind of having to take the risk. Yeah. So, what do you love most about being a business owner, and what would you say is the hardest part? I think the best part is um, the fact that you work for yourself, and that whatever happens in life, you can be the first to know. Yeah. Me and Michaela always say that when people get fired, you, you're probably the the third person to know about. Um, we're in the car now. So, um, yeah. Uh, the best part of working for yourself would be that yeah you know when you when you work for somebody else you're probably the third person to know fifth person to know mm -hmm. that you're about to get fired but when you work for yourself you kind of can see things coming you can react mm -hmm. to it it offers that freedom which I think people can appreciate now that there there's a lot of unemployment happening yeah yeah um and that was the that was the best part hardest part would you say there's something that you don't enjoy just like, stuff like this just running around <laughs> all the time people undermining you like that's what yeah. when you're when you're a woman and when you're you look young if you say something people have to question it a thousand times or if yeah. you're you know a middle-aged white man it would just be done you get that a lot <laughs> whether it's um paying invoices just something as simple as saying pull up here it's just a fight at every single step I so that's you. annoying but um, yeah <laughs> it's like you fill a role that society doesn't let you fill do you mm, know what I mean mm. and when you fill it everyone thinks you're obnoxious but it, it's because they're not letting be, it be received you know yeah and it's almost like you've got to like prove yourself even when you're there I hear you exactly it's exhausting <laughs> I hear you if you had a chance to start your career over again is there anything that you would do differently um Michaela you you laughed what <laughs> Hi. Hi, Michaela. <laughs> you too. Um, I lost. I, I personally just wish um, 
I, I don't know, I guess having black parents or parents, you know, in another country where it's not their original country, mm-hmm. education mm-hmm. is so stressed. Yeah. And my parents wanted me to come out of the gate, immediately get that corporate job so that it was respectable and they could talk to their friends about how well their children are doing. Yeah. But honestly, I honestly wish I just didn't. <laughs> I honestly wish I just relaxed a little bit. I think I would have actually been better off in my actual passion of traveling. I mm. wish I just took a regular bar job, traveled around the world, and I probably would have set up my business anyway. Wow. But I would have been happier. To, I would have been more fulfilled. And I feel like I live life, whereas to be honest with you, at this point, came out of the corporate world, started a business, and I'm very happy it went well. Mm-hmm. But I've gone straight into marriage, having a baby. I've never mm. really had that blow it off time, you know? You. Um, so those are the days of your life. Like literally early 20s, like, yes, of course, take life seriously. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Yeah. But you are young when you're young. You, you discover know? more in the free time than you do in a yeah. job. I think jobs are like the worst place to learn anything. Mm-hmm. They make sure that you don't learn these your initiative sometimes. You know, it's just like other people's mm-hmm. ways of doing things. The same with education. Yeah, like, what was you saying? The best place to learn at education is, what was you saying? I think in collaborating and meeting people and just being mm-hmm. open to it. Kind of having yeah. free time. I think when mm-hmm. I left my professional job, I just figured, what's the point in doing something full time? Time, if you mm. time it's just going to mean that you're not going to be able to discover other things and mm-hmm. sometimes in, in that silence and in that kind of moment of not knowing is where you can kind of discover stuff which is a scary place to be yeah you have to be resourceful but if you're going to look to always know exactly where your text coming from yeah then you will always know where it's coming from and if you don't like where that is then that's what you yeah. signed up for so i think yeah it's, it's, it's always scary there's no point in people thinking you're crazy but mm. it um if you keep at it it does work out I love that mindset and yeah I'm similar myself just more so leading your life doing the things that you want to do instead of listening to everybody else on the status quo you know as long as you lead with the love in your heart you know you're going to figure things out and what's best for you yeah exactly (laughs) I love that what would you say are the top three skills needed to be a successful entrepreneur um you need to be hardworking. you need to not be risk averse like you need to be okay with taking risks Mm -hmm. um and then managing risk and always up for learning new things. Oh yeah, you need to be up for learning new things. Love that. Very powerful advice. And you girls, how do you market your business and which tactics have been the most successful for you? Well, the Instagram has really just taken off. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that that's because, you know, if you, if people want people to share their business, but they don't think about the experiences, people share for selfish reasons that like they want other people to see what they're doing because it's a good thing. So you need to make sure that every single element of it makes people organically want to share it so that's what happens people come they enjoy it they take a picture then they share it with their family so it's just like it always is working for us Mm -hmm. um whereas i think that people kind of work backwards they create something that's not spectacular and then they try to get people to care about their paper cups that are ugly and it's like (laughs) people just won't like no one's gonna like that picture it's not interesting yeah um so and and nothing about you is interesting whereas if you find a cool way to kind of make it like if you're doing eco cups that are super cute and pink Mm -hmm. and the whole idea was like you know this you know Blair Wardorf you know of eco cups people would buy that they'd pose with it they you know they could maybe enjoy that if you had pop-ups where you had events and people using these eco cups like Dow's experiences you know flat lays with this stuff so yeah yeah do more it's just that's what Kay says yeah do more than the thing is we kind of had this mentality from the very beginning like okay and then what what can we add Whereas I think that sometimes when you're starting a business, people always want you to keep it. Um, obviously, they're always on about profit and mm. all some stuff. But you have to invest in making it worth it first, and then you can adjust the profit. But um, I think people usually try to go the other way around, like run a scam. They try. They know it's not that great. They know that there's no reason why no one cares, but they're expecting the miracle to happen when even they wouldn't be interested. <laughs> That is a really good advice. And yeah, I love that you two are so focused on the experience for your customer and what you can give. That's really powerful. Um, has COVID affected your business in any way or is there anything that's like dramatically changed or anything? Yeah, COVID is basically, it's legal to open up. So that's, mm. in, that's what COVID's done. Um, and obviously that's meant that we have had to, I guess um, focus more on trying to bring some stuff online but yeah having said that online is a slow burner it's not as simple as people just opening up um, oh, a business well, online easy. yeah because you know it takes time for for, for that to be yeah. to kind of get traction we, we had already kind of made the decision to focus on um, in-person experiences yeah um, so 
all our money was tied up in the in-person experience so overnight yeah. it was like ah so what do you have for online since yeah. we're in this pandemic yeah. mm-hmm. um and then we kind of like, oh my god um it's been i think the way um it's been done here well not just in britain a lot of places has been really problematic for business owners because you can't just turn around and say open and then say close and then say open so for example um this christmas i mean we were kind of lucky our losses weren't as big as other losses so Uh through the grapevine i mean we heard about a very well-known restaurant who literally lost thousands through that chain um and that's that's you know people's stability that's people's jobs we had to hire two extra members of staff for christmas Uh, even um, moved into london and then found out so she didn't move for us thank god but sadly we had to let her go um and you know that was really disappointing you know she was a great member of staff but we had to let her go so um yeah it's affected it in that way um yeah it's I, I can't say it's been a positive effect yeah <laughs> no. so we're trying our best to turn it around yeah i think we'll all be hopefully back to normal very soon and hopefully yeah. all businesses will pick back up because this has been a really stressful time indeed absolutely yeah man so with the amazing success of saint ames do you have any plans to expand into other areas or even open more locations yeah so the hope is to do kind of expanding through franchising which is something that has kind of been picking up a bit since mm-hmm. we've been closed just had more time to focus on it so we're looking at america and the uae first amazing. and that's where a lot of the interest is from so that's that's exciting Mm-hmm. fantastic so lastly being a wonderful business owner and creating a cafe surrounded by magic you can touch what does it mean to you to truly give your all or nothing oh i think that your all is or nothing is basically what every business owner does because usually you put your own personal credit at risk mm-hmm. you're taking yourself out of the job market wow. you told all your friends to, to go and support this you've come out and it's just sort of like you 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 can't put your foot half in yeah you know we we had to come out and do it with our chest yeah and that is exactly why it's scary but then at the same time you just have to do it I think people should always figure out what sort of life they want and then if they're actually going to go and do it um and it's okay if you're not somebody who wants to run your own business not a lot of people don't we need all everyone you know people need people to work for them Mm -hmm. people need people who who are you know strong enough to jump out it annoys me when I see people who aren't strong enough to make the leap become business owners because they're only ever going to kind of a lot of the time like affect people who work for them and things like that if they get to that stage because it's kind of like if you're not would be having people underneath mm a natural leader um i think that is okay like not everyone has to be an entrepreneur like it's okay it's completely okay to do what you do excellently and don't let like society know it's cool now whereas you know if one's that to like to have a nine to five isn't cool it's yeah. like it's it, everyone the world needs everyone doing yeah. what they are good at yes yeah. yeah so yeah yeah i think everything, everything you do do with um i know these are old-fashioned words but they still stand true integrity and honor yeah like, there is no shame in working I was I, I was a dishwasher. I was the best dishwasher. There's no shame in working for low money at a job, but just make sure that you know that you're proud of that. You wouldn't be embarrassed if someone got that dirty that clean dish, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, and usually, you know, the I I'm definitely a believer in the law of vibration. You're putting out that bright vibration that you're proud of what you do at whatever yeah. level, better things will be given to you um, and people will see it. I so you don't that. need to worry and maybe you're just a really good second in command um and you will get the the payback for how great you are so it doesn't have to be through entrepreneurship but it does have some lifetime lessons that we can all incorporate yeah like take pride in whatever you love you at some people mm. are like oh i don't want to do this so mm. i don't do it badly and it's like no that makes you that makes you look that makes yeah. you look crappy exactly. like you know it doesn't matter what you're doing be the most excellent person at it and that's, yep. that's the most important yeah i agree and i've always yeah been on the same notion of like how you do one thing is how you do everything so it says a lot about you how you maneuver the little task in your life you know that is some great advice mm-hmm. girls thank mm-hmm. you so much thank you thank you and also sorry for the up and down <laughs> <laughs> it is all like, good yeah. amazing <laughs> business advice and thank you lovely girls i wish you continued success <laughs> Thank you so much. All the best. Bye. Bye. Bye, Michaela.